Hello everyone, welcome to the new episode of Medical Research with me, Mohan Sarma. Today, I will briefly walk you through the history of medical research. I'd like to start the presentation with this quote by Dr. Frederick Hegel. The only thing we learn from history is that we learn nothing from history. But even having said this, it's always worth remembering what are the landmark periods where medical research uh, were performed. The first recorded uh, you know, uh, research was performed in biblical period in 506 BC by a king named Nebuchadnezzar. He conducted an experiment in a group of people uh, where one group was allowed to eat only meat and drink only wine, where, whereas another group was forbidden to take this and were strictly on vegetarian diet. They were followed up for 10 days, and at the end of 10 days, they underwent physical examination, and this was the result. Those on the vegetarian diet appeared healthier than those on meat and wine. So this can be regarded as an open and uncontrolled human experiment according to the present day research criteria. Let's talk briefly about the contribution of a Hippocrates. Uh, you know, Hippocrates is the father of medicine and he has largely developed and uh, modernized the concept of practice of medicine by mainly focusing on diagnosis. He is the one who categorized the illnesses as acute versus chronic, epidemic versus endemic. And he used terms such as exacerbation, relapse, resolution, crisis, paroxysm, peak, and convalescence, which are pretty much used today also. And to our greatest amazement, many recommendations he, uh, he gave at that time are, are correct even by the current standard. One such example would be his recommendation of dietary control and exercise to treat diabetes mellitus. And another is the treatment of hemorrhoid. He must have done some form of research to come to this conclusion, which were true, but there has been no mention of the word research in any of the Hippocratic writings. This, then the fast forward to 11th century when uh, a gentleman named Song Su, a renowned Chinese scientist of that era, documented a trial of ginseng in 1061 AD. Ginseng is also in use in today for a variety of conditions. So he, he recruited two people. One, one person was given ginseng and another person was not given ginseng and they were asked to run for 1.5 to 2 kilometer. And at the end of the, of the marathon, I would say, the person who received ginseng had no breathing problem, whereas the person who did not receive ginseng developed severe shortness of breath. So we can conclude that this is the first recorded example of a control group. In 1643 AD, a Belgian uh, scientist uh, named Van Halman performed, did not actually perform, but he challenged the traditional Galenic physicians who believed in treating fevers with bloodletting and purging, which was very common during that period. But he did not, uh, he, did, he was not convinced of that idea. So he invited them to participate in a trial involving 200 to 500 patients. And he proposed to compare the treatment of fever by traditional method like bloodletting and purging or by a regime that did not in, include this. Uh, uh, the, the, and for the first time, he proposed that patient would be randomized for the treatment allocation. The concept of randomization was introduced this time. Though this experiment actually did not happen for the reason which is not known to us, uh, so for the first time, uh, recruiting a uh, concept of recruiting a large number of patients and a randomization were introduced. If we talk about randomized control trial or clinical research, we cannot forget the name Dr. James Lind. 
In 740, in a large voyage where there were some 1900 soldiers, 14 of them had died by a disease uh, called scurvy. So he was assigned to find a treatment for that disease. Though there has been some evidence that citrus fruit or vitamin C is helpful in treating this patient, he wanted to prove this by the scientific method. So he selected 12 sailors affected with scurvy. Uh, we're not quite sure why. They, he selected a fewer number of uh, participants. He could have easily recruited more, but he chose to select one to 12. And they divide, he divided this 12 soldier into six groups, each group having two person. And he gave uh, you know, each group with this treatment and the uh, the group which received uh, which uh, the group which was supposed to re receive oranges and lemon could receive this treatment on uh, this uh, allocation only for five days as they ran out of fruits. Uh, in other group they received the full ten days of treatment, and this was the result. The person the, the persons who received oranges and lemon, one of them had complete recovery, whereas the other person had near complete recovery and the persons who received uh, cider also noticed some uh, some improvement this was the first time a treatment uh, was proven to be effective based on multiple uh, you know multiple treatment allocations the modern uh, concept of randomized control trial begins in only 1940, and this was the first randomized control trial recorded in modern uh, research, which was performed by Professor Bradford by Professor Bradford Hill, and the uh, the trial was sponsored by the Medical Research Council of UK. For the first time, the, the result of this trial proved that streptomycin is helpful in pulmonary tuberculosis. Let's briefly talk about the history of uh, uh, medical research in Nepal. The first recorded research activity was performed in 1951 when malaria survey was conducted in Kathmandu Valley. Then in 1965 to 64, uh, six Nepal Health Survey was performed with the, by the Nepal government with the help of the University of Hawaii and the Pili Foundation. In 1976, Nepal Fertility Survey was performed by the Nepal government and with the help of University of California at Berkeley. In 1979 to 80, Nepal Blindness Survey was uh, found, done and the cataract was found to be the commonest cause of blindness in Nepal. In 1988 to 1990, Nepal Nutrition Intervention Project was uh, carried out. Established in 1989 is a collaboration between the Johns Hopkins University and Nepal Nethrojotisan, Nepal Eye Foundation. This was a randomized double-blind placebo control community trial of 20,630 children aged 6 to 72 months. And this trial demonstrated a 30% reduction in child mortality, leading to substantial changes in both Nepali and other governments' vitamin A program. Another landmark uh, trial was performed back in 2000, uh, early 2000. This was a collaboration um, between U.S. Army and then Royal Nepal Army, sponsored by Glasgow Smith Klein from uh, Klein. And the patient recruitment, the recruitment was performed between July 2001 to January 2004. This was a phase two randomized double blind placebo control trial of this faction to evaluate safety and efficacy in 1794 subjects. And the result found that this faction was effective in more than 95% of the time. Uh, and there are two organizations which are worth mentioning here, which regulate and promote health research. The first one is Nepal Health Research Council, established in 1991. This organization uh, both regulates and promotes health research in Nepal, whereas University Grants Commission, established in 1993, largely promotes health research in the academic setting. 
In summary, clinical research has a long and fa uh, fascinating journey with significant ups and downs. The recorded history of clinical trials uh, and research goes back to the biblical description in 506 BC, whereas the recorded research activity in, in, in Nepal was in 1951 AD. The, though there has been a lot of breakthroughs through research, the science of clinical research is still evolving. I hope the information presented here is useful to you. Thank you so much for being with me this time.